Okay, so hi everyone. I uh, am uh, Radu Motishan. I uh, am from Timshara, Romania, so we are very close. And I'm uh, really happy to be here and have the chance to talk to you all. Thank you for your interest in being here. Also, thank you to the organizers for having me here. What I would like to talk, you, talk to you about is uh, hardware manufacturing, and that is because uh, I think we share test, test, oh, thank you. I think we share something in common. I am a maker myself. I am trained as a software developer, but uh, electronics was a long-term hobby of mine. So uh, what I did recently was just to move from my uh, boring job, if you want, and uh, do the things I enjoy most, and uh, that is very well connected to making, hacking, and uh, interesting projects, which I like to use my time on. And um, the thing about uh, hacking, making, having fun with electronics and everything is uh, that it can go on uh, a very interesting route if you are just a bit careful about planning some details and uh, trying to get to a given result. What I'm trying to say here is that usually what we do looks like this. So that's what we enjoy doing, and uh, that brings us great satisfaction. The problem is that you might be doing some high voltage experience, experiments and then run into problems if you don't clean your desk properly. So I done that and I enjoyed it a lot. And some of my projects included lots of sparks, robots and uh, things like those. And you can still see some of that work on my blog. I still enjoy doing that. Unfortunately, time is a problem. And uh, one thing I used to say to my friends is that uh, we are all uh, doing the wrong thing. We should actually quit our jobs and start thinking about building a time machine. Because then we would solve all our problems. So after having a lot of fun with uh, these interesting experiments, one day I uh, decided to do a step further, and uh, that was to take one of my projects, which was developed, like I've shown you previously, on the messy desk, and just uh, try to put it to production. Why I did that was because I uh, wanted to build a tool which is not useful just for myself, but also for others. But uh, in that case, you can't just deliver a bunch of messy cables. So the trick here was to be a bit more organized, and this is how I managed to bring a toy developed in my free time, time as a hobby project to something approaching a product which could actually enter the market. And uh, the challenge was tough, really. Like uh, going into this direction and uh, stopping the playtime and just trying to get more serious about the things uh, I did was difficult because there are so many aspects which need to be taken into consideration when you're trying to build your own hardware product. And uh, one of the biggest challenges are related to the resources that you have. You know that uh, for software it's a complicated thing to do, like you need to have all that uh, architecture all the organization of the code and then all the testing in order to have something that works for hardware is at least double the effort to get the result because hardware exists in two dimensions. You also have the software. You need to have firmware for digital electronics. So you get the software development part there as well. But then for hardware, you get all those testing related to interferences you have an inductor which can actually just uh, ruin your entire PCB and then you need to start over. So things were good because here's Dave holding one of the early products I was able to do, just uh, playing and uh, moving from my desk to something which could, I could actually put into production. If Dave was happy, then I am happy as well. What can I say? He usually just uh, throws curses to everything, and uh, he's a very hard to please guy, but there's the thumb up, so that's really great. 
So, of course, the next thing was to scale up, and that, win that means a single thing, volume. You need more units, you need to build more, and uh, just remember where we started. We, we used to have fun, we used to play, we used to have a messy desk, but now we need to keep up with demand, we need to be better organized, and most important, time needs to be enough to get the job done. And this is actually a very big problem here already. Just to, to see those bunch of units there, just imagine how much time you would need to solder those by hand using SMD components. Just imagine how much time it takes to screw in all those uh, eight screws on the enclosure. So it, it really adds up. So when you just finished everything, you realize that you have an issue or the testing um, doesn't go good and you need to start over. So these are tough challenges. So what I did, and this is the thing I want to talk to you about, and uh, really this is not a monologue. I want to get you involved, so feel free to ask questions whenever you want, because these are some lessons I am uh, willing to share with you. The next thing I did was just to go on Alibaba. It's that unfriendly site, maybe you know AliExpress, I'm sure you know eBay from buying stuff. Uh, AliExpress is also a nice alternative. Then you have that uh, Taobao, I never got my packages from there. Did anyone was able to be successful on Taobao? I, you need to tell me what I did wrong there, so I'm, I'm really curious to find out. Okay, so I, I missed that probably. So uh, what I did with Alibaba was uh, to try to get to the people I needed. Those included PCB manufacturers in the first place, but then I also needed companies doing uh, aluminum processing. I wanted to have uh, the products I was building put into aluminum enclosures. So for that, I needed various uh, companies doing various things, but uh, most important, I needed to find a way to put everything together, like uh, having a central spot where everything is being centralized, to have uh, someone that is able to uh, assemble things, to test things, and uh, just uh, ship them to the destinations I was interested in. And uh, this, is, this was a blessing, really. Doing this was probably the most important thing for this project, which uh, actually started as uh, me having fun in my spare time. Because I was able to find uh, not one, but uh, I think three companies doing aluminum manufacturing. And uh, I had the chance to try uh, two of them. Because uh, in the first place, of course, just browsing Alibaba, it was like um, finding uh, very many suppliers which said, yeah, yeah, we can do everything, uh, come work with us, uh, try us, we are the best, but uh, actually not all of them are able to deliver what they promise. So um, it was important to, to test them. Then for the PCB manufacturing, there were also other companies that uh, can uh, do this part also assembling. So it's interesting to see that uh, most of the companies just deliver the PCBs, but you can find a few that uh, also do assembling. So no more soldering by hand. You can have the job done in China. And uh, really, there is a big advantage here. Imagine you have to solder like uh, 10 boards for a product you are working on. So everything is fine, you just follow the design, you have the soldering in place, and then comes the testing, where you see that uh, like three of your boards fail for some unknown reason. Maybe it's a problem with the soldering, or maybe something unknown, something related to voodoo happening on your board, and uh, the bloody board simply doesn't want to work, so what do you do? You just start testing it, you take out your oscilloscope, and you waste a lot of time just to find out that there is a small piece of Cooper somewhere just touching something and that blows everything away. And you waste half a day on a board just to find that problem. That's not okay. And the advantage is that uh, when you have uh, a contract with a manufacturer, you pay for working boards. So it's their problem that they are having defects or problems in assembly. You get the thing you paid for and you waste no time. 
And this is, this is really important, especially when you're trying to build something from the bottom up, because, as you know, resources are limited, and uh, you need to calculate everything very carefully if you are to, to get somewhere with it. And then, of course, it's important for, for your partner to, to be able to, to deliver quality that you can trust. Like, um, you, need to, to, you, you need to make your customers, if you want, or your partners, or the guys you're delivering to, happy about the product you're delivering. And uh, this is a tough challenge, really. Personally, I never been to China. So that might be tricky because you need someone to supervise what's happening there. It's a problem of trust if you want. You need to either to be, to be capable of trusting your partner or to, to supervise it very closely. So I don't have an answer for you on this one. For me, it worked just fine. I was able to find a company and uh, things went well with those guys for like two years now. And uh, I, I can say that uh, I would continue to work with those guys as well. So do you have any questions on uh, this mechanism going from Alibaba to actual people in China and uh, you would like to know something related to this more? How many units you have to make to start co collaborating with them? That's, that's a great question, because usually the quantity is uh, quoted in uh, numbers starting with uh, 500 units and go up. But uh, the guys I worked with and uh, some others I found, because I tried to have some redundancy, I didn't uh, play everything on one card. Well, I was able to find guys that uh, agreed to work on quanti quantities up to 100, and that was perfect. And also, they, in some cases, uh, agreed to offer test boards, like uh, 10 or 20 of them. Of course, those are a bit more expensive, but nothing to, to compare with what I, uh, was, I would get locally. Is there anything else? Okay. How much it takes to have a prototype from China to Romania? So the prototype, I'm uh, building it myself. I uh, was able to uh, do uh, two layer boards using the uh, hot iron. You know that method, the transferring toner and things like those. And uh, that worked fine. Uh, there was that picture there where I told you that uh, I was trying to do everything more standardized and uh, just uh, try to shape it into a product. That, that image there was actually a board which I was able to do myself. So the prototyping is local. That, that's very important. And uh, then when you place the order, you just need to export your Gerber files and make sure you have no mistakes there because there is no turning back. If there was a mistake, you will just uh, throw them away. And uh, it takes like uh, two weeks to get the manufacturing done. Quantity is uh, really not important here, like uh, they have the machinery to uh, cover uh, big numbers. And then uh, you could count the shipping back like one week. So it's a delay of like uh, three weeks from the moment you click it on your computer and you get the actually goods delivered. But uh, I don't know how things are here in Serbia, but in Romania we also have uh, the customs office. And uh, those guys uh, love us a lot because they always, but always, delay with one extra week. No, it's not that, really. They, they don't do that anymore, but uh, it's enough that they are a big pain in the beep. And, uh, okay, so what the problem here is I, I was in Cluj in uh, one of the cities in Romania, and there was this topic on open innovation. It's a great topic nowadays. And open innovation was uh, related to the thing that... Uh, in uh, this moment of time we are living, uh, we have so little time for everything. So the idea is to try to speed up the development, to try to put creativity to work at a faster pace. So if you have idea, to have everything you need to be able to get on the market. This was the topic. And uh, one of the proposed solutions was to see the city, an entire city, as a playground. What does that mean? It means that if someone like me or you comes with a product to find the trust to have your product accepted faster, 
Because if you don't do that, uh, startups especially will have no chance to, uh, to get the right point because it takes uh, so many certifications, it takes uh, so much time, so uh, many resources to actually get on the market on the traditional way. So this is a problem uh, that stops progress if you want. So the problem here is that uh, it's great to have the city as a playground. Unfortunately, the customs office are so far away from this concept, really. So uh, obstacles all around. <laughs>